Hey everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery, and today I'm gonna show you how to skim coat over wall texture for a super smooth finish on modern builds. Today we're gonna to be skim coating in my living room and dining room, and as you can see, my walls already have an orange peel texture with paint over them. I started by removing the pine chair rail paneling that's going around my dining room. It's ugly, outdated, and needed to go. Next, I grabbed a paint tool and I scraped away any of the raised adhesive. I also made sure to get any paint blobs or bumps that were on my wall. You wanna make sure there are no high points. After I removed all of the trim around my baseboards and my door frames, I masked off all of my electrical outlets. That way I didn't cover them in joint compound. I also masked off all of my accessories like my furnace, my air conditioner, and anything else that I couldn't take off the wall. Skim coating makes a huge mess, especially for me since I'm not a pro, so taking some time to mask everything off is definitely worth it. For this first coat, I used lightweight all-purpose joint compound and I watered it down just a little bit before mixing it up with a drill. If you add too much water, it'll be prone to shrink or crack as it dries. You basically want it as thick as possible, but still be able to spread with this inch and a quarter roller that we're gonna be using to apply it. Let's do this. I've found that it's easiest for me to work in smaller sections and flatten it out as I go. And a 12 or 14 inch drywall knife is a really common tool to smooth out this thin set. You'll notice that I worked the joint compound into the corners before I smoothed out the face of the wall. I wanna build as thick of a coat as possible on this first pass, so I'm using light pressure and making sure not to dig in with my trowel. Now I'm using really light pressure and I'm slowly taking my handle closer to the wall as I go down it. And I am not worried about any of these small imperfections. We're gonna sand back and do a second coat. And there you go. That's how you apply your first skim coat if you're using a standard drywall knife. The wider you go, the better. And I was online the other day and I picked up a very cool tool that I am super excited to try out on this wall. Now I am very excited to try this out. It is a 48 inch skimming blade. This is gonna give me a really wide reference surface and I am super excited to try it out. I'll leave a link below. So right away, I was super hyped to try out this new tool. A 48 inch wide blade means it's the same width as a standard sheet of drywall. So if there is a dip or a raise in any panel, then theoretically I could go stud to stud or edge to edge and flatten it out. Now I found that I was getting a little bit more negative space or voids when I used this than a drywall knife. And that's because I built a thicker first coat. That wide reference surface prevented me from digging in and removing as much material per pass. Check it out. So as of now, my first impressions are really great and we'll come back with a second coat to fill in all of those voids. But while we're working, I wanna focus on the doorways. So I'm gonna go with a no trim look around my doors, or at least that's what I'm attempting. So I filled in any negative space around my door casing and then used drywall joint tape to make sure that didn't crack as it dried. And with that, our first skim coat is complete. And now it's time to sand these walls. And if you're doing a small room or just a single wall, a drywall hand sander on a pole is a great option. You just wanna sand down the high points, not worrying about any low spots because we're gonna fill those in later. But in today's video, I'm gonna be using the same drywall sander that I used on my ceiling. It comes with its own dust collection bag, but it only works so, so. And in today's video, I've got it hooked up to my shop vac with a dust separator. All of the dust should fall into this five gallon bucket and keep my filter and bag in my shop vac clean. Whoa, so let's give it a try and see how the dust collection works. My first takeaway was that sanding these walls was way easier than sanding my ceilings smooth. Just like with the pole sander, I don't wanna sand down to smooth. I just wanna make sure that if I have any ridges or high points, they're taken down. At first, I used a really high grit sanding pad, but then I switched out to 100 grit and that worked well for me. This is probably where I should mention, if you're interested in this or any of the tools and supplies that I've used for this project, I'll make sure and leave links down in the description so you can find them. This sander has a speed setting of one through five, and I found that I got best results with it on three using a real touchy trigger. Then I came back with the pole sander and got everything that I couldn't with the round pad. 
Your second skim coat should go on just like the first, but on this one, you can use a little bit more pressure with your drywall knife. The way I like to explain it is your first skim coat gets you to about 75 or 80% of the way to flat, and the second one is supposed to get you all the way there. I still had some negative spaces in this second coat, but like before, don't worry about them, especially if you're using a wide skimming blade like this. And really quick, if you're not already, make sure and click that subscribe button and the notification bell down below so you can keep up with all of the projects in this Joshua Tree cabin renovation. And quick pro tip, I found out that I had an easier time using a drywall hawk, which is this platter I'm using, instead of a standard mud pan. It's really easy to load up that front edge with a drywall hawk and smooth out the corners before I worked with the big skimming blade to flatten out the face of the wall. It's always important to keep your skimming blade clean, and if you wet it before you smooth, that does help. And that concludes Coat 2. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And really quick, I'd like to give a big thanks to the sponsor of today's episode, Squarespace. If you need a website, an online store, or just a custom domain, Squarespace is your one-stop shop, and the best part is you need zero website building experience. Squarespace's designer templates look great on desktop, tablet, and mobile, no matter where customers find you, and they are packed with tons of great features, like no limits to the number of products that you can sell using a Squarespace store, the Squarespace Video Studio mobile app that allows you to create high-level professional content for your website and social media, and don't forget member areas where you can package premium content behind a paywall, charging your members a monthly description at squarespace.com slash modern builds. You can build out your entire Squarespace site before entering any of your credit card info. And then when it's time to make your website live, don't forget to use my code modern builds for 10% off your first site, store, or domain. Now let's get back to the build. And before my final sanding, I'm gonna come back through with some more joint compound and fill every void that I can find. I don't wanna build this up at all. I wanna squeegee it flat. So this is where you can really let your OCD or attention to detail shine. You wanna make sure and find as many voids or negative spaces as you can find so that whenever you do this final sanding, you don't have a lot of things to fix afterwards. It's time for our final sanding and I'm swapping out this 100 grit sandpaper for this 240 grit sanding net. These are supposed to really let air breathe and collect dust well and I want it to be super, super fine grit so it's not aggressive. Let's get this done. So by now, I've used this Amazon drywall sander to smooth out the skim coat on my walls and my ceiling, and I've got good feedback. For the price, about 150 or 75 bucks, it worked really well, and it doesn't seem to be working any worse than when I got it. And quick pro tip, you can rent drywall sanders and dust collection from a home improvement store like the Home Depot. It really does help if you're sanding your corners to cut away the sandpaper on the long edge of your pole sander. It just keeps it from digging into the ceiling when you're sanding the walls and vice versa. And these angled sanding sponges are the bomb. They're great both on corners, but especially window frames. As my final, final step, I added a little bit of pigment to my joint compound that I had left over, and I used it to find any void left over and sand that back. And with that, our drywall skim coat is complete. Now first, let's check out these befores. Not only was there ugly paneling on the wall, but it was an ugly paint color full of nail holes. And now let's check out these afters. So that's about all there is to it, and I really appreciate y'all watching. I hope you learned something from this video, and if you have any great tips, make sure and leave those down in the comments below. Be sure to stay tuned. I'm painting the house next, and I've got a very fun episode planned. Bye, everybody.